Defense Metals is advancing a rare earth project in central BC. CEO is Craig Taylor. Craig, welcome to Kitco. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. What are you advancing, Craig? We're advancing a light rare earth project north of Prince George, BC. The primary minerals, rare earth minerals, are neodymium and praseodymium. And those are the key elements in producing lightweight, high strength magnets that you see in the green energy today, being electric vehicles, wind turbines, medical applications, um, defense applications, and really everything in your day to day life that has a small motor in it has one of these magnets that come from neodymium and praseodymium. What's the stage of the project? We're at a pre-feasibility level. We've just been funded um, through RCF as a lead order. They did extensive due diligence on us. They spent about three or four months digging deep into the project through the processing side, the mining, uh, ESG, financials, and, and we're really happy to have them as a partner. And it gives the, the project a lot of credibility. Um, it, it's a good moniker for us in that they do such thorough due, due diligence. I think the street understands that. And, and they funded us through PFS. Uh, they, they accounted for half of the fund the raising, and we raised another six and a half ourselves. The total raise was 12 and a half million. That'll get us through PFS. We should be finished that first quarter of 2024. And we'll be one of the very few rare earth projects in North America and really in the world that's got to a pre-feasibility pre and then feasibility level. Uh, you mentioned uh, processing. Uh, do you have any idea what that looks like? Because that can be tricky for rare earth projects, right? It can be very tricky. So we've got a couple options. The first one that we explored through the PEA was um, developing a concentrate on site and selling that um, as a concentrate. That was going to fund us for the next three to four years. And through our PFS, we're going to do some trade-off studies, and we may come to the conclusion that it make, might make more sense to actually build a hydromet plant and develop either a carbonate or an oxide to sell to a separator such as Mountain Pass. They're working on completing their separation facility down in California. And we do believe that there's several other projects uh, on the go in North America that will be complete by the time we're in production. We also oh, could sell to, to, to sorry, Europe, Australia, hmm. Korea, Japan, who are working on uh, separation facilities as well. Uh, my apologies for interruption, Craig, but uh, that was uh, interested in, um, um, you know, because I see that uh, you have been out a while uh, at this project. Has there been a big build out in uh, downstream uh, conversion, downstream uh, processing for rare earth with uh, all the focus on critical metals? Not enough, not nearly enough. And I think uh, especially with this, this latest news with China, banning um, a, a few minerals and the fear that it's going to extend into rare earths. I think it's going to wake up the government and they'll start acting a little bit quicker. Um, frankly, I think they're a decade behind. They are making some some movement and I expect that to accelerate now. Uh, what's the area that you uh, work in? Uh, do you have community support there, Craig? Yeah, we definitely do. We're in central Prince George, which is um, a very industrial town, a lot of mining, uh, forestry, big rail hub. Uh, and we've got tremendous support from the First Nations there. McLeod Lake is uh, we're within their territory, and we've been speaking with them the last three years. We have an agreement in place. We are working on further agreements. And, and they're an extremely commercial band in that they've worked on the Site C Dam uh, up in Port St. John. It's a $16 billion project. And they have a suite of contractors that cooperate with that project. They also built Mount Milligan. And they've recently, that's a mine close to us, and that they've recently announced they're going to do a $6 billion green hydrogen project uh, just to the north of where our project is. So uh, we've got very good partners there. They're eager for us to advance the project, and, and they want to go hand in hand to make sure this gets to fruition. Uh, going back to what you're saying about uh, funding for uh, downstream uh, um, processing, that, that's interesting, Craig, because um, there does seem to have been a lot of announcements, though. So you mentioned Mountain Pass, for instance, which has seen a big investment in the last couple of years. There's also Linus that is doing some work down in the south as well, too. But you still see that there is a tie up with uh, what's happening with Rare Earth. Yeah, you say a big investment. It's it's really just a drop in the bucket. You know, these these separation facilities are a billion dollars to build. And China funds them fully through their through the government. So I think you know the DoD is 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 probably looking at um, the, putting more money into the space out of necessity. You know China's basically weaponized rare earths now, uh, and that was always a fear. 
but I'm hoping that that propels them to put more money into the sector. You know, they have a, a $1 trillion budget and, and to build a billion dollar separation facility for uh, the security of their nation, I think is not beyond them. Uh, we saw this run up in the past uh, off of the same issues uh, regarding China, just uh, the worry about uh, the concentration in the market. And then again, the market kind of went to sleep. Um, and then uh, we saw that just being turned over to the low cost Chinese producers for the rest of the 2010s. What's different this time, Craig? Uh, different is, is the EV and green energy demand. It, you know, the, the demand staggering. We have to double production in the next decade. And, and that's the equivalent of bringing one mountain pass project on every year for the next 10 years. And in North America, the only two viable projects are us and mountain pass, in our opinion, to get to production. So there's a need for feed. I think we're part of the solution. We've been working as hard as we can for five years to advance and de-risk this project as, as much as we can to get to this stage. And uh, I, I think there's a good future in, in the industry, but we do need help from the government. Uh, you uh, recently announced an alliance with Discovery Group. How are they, and uh, why did you partner with them, uh, Craig? Well, they're wonderful. They're wonderful marketers. Rita and her team are great. Uh, John Robbins has an incredible reputation and, and reach globally. So if we're looking to partner with them, um, with meaningful investors going forward, he'd be the one to lead the charge, and, and we're, we're very happy to be partnered with them. Uh, looking broadly out in uh, rare earth uh, space, uh, Craig, um, you know, we've seen just a, a number of announcements, uh, again, uh, mentioning either with happening at Mountain Pass, Linus, uh, the downstream. Is there any trends that uh, you are looking towards or has any been particular piece of news uh, that's uh, been important to rare earths? Well, obviously, this news out of China was very important. We've seen an incredible amount of interest in our stock, especially out of the U.S. Uh, since that announcement came through. It's a very serious issue. Um, you know, 3,500 military components are reliant on Chinese rare earths. And the DOD has, has said that they will not accept any components that has any trace of Chinese product in them as of 2026. So there's going to be a real push to get domestic supp supply. And as I said, I think we are the, the second best project to Mountain Pass in North America. And we're advancing as quickly as we can. And, and partners like John Robbins, the Discovery Group, RCF are going to help us get it over the finish line. Lastly, uh, milestones over the next 12 months. Okay, first would be uh, our updated resource. So our PEA was, was done with 4,000 meters of drilling. We've since done 10,000 meters. So Chris Raffle and the Apex team are working on the updated resource. That should be complete within the next week to two weeks. That will be used to plug in to the, the PFS. We've hired SRK as an engineering firm to handle the mining side of the PFS. We've hired Hatch to handle the processing side. We're doing some sonic drilling. We're doing geotech drilling. We're doing continued environmental. We have um, new new agreements with First Nations. We're hoping it's going to develop shortly. And all in all, I think the space and, and the pricing is going to firm up with the new announcements from China and as the Western world realizes that we have to support this industry. Craig, thanks for speaking with Kitco. Thank you so much. My name is Michael McCray and you're watching Kiko Miner.